Now before I start this review, I would just like to clarify that if I seem overly optimistic about this movie, you should know that might be because I have no reference point to positively or negatively compare this film to, as I haven't actually seen the original Magnificent Seven. So if you're watching this and being some craziest cinema elitist and thinking, WHAT THE FUCK, Kiki gave this shit a good review when the original is so much better, then sure, okay, yeah, that that's probably true. I ain't seen it though. Soz. That said, I'm not a total philistine, calm your passions lads. I have watched the other seminal classic this movie is also a remake of. Yeah, that's right. I've seen A Bug's Life. Oh, and that, um Kurosawa thing. Something about seven ninjas or some shit. Ah nah man, that crap was in black and white. Bug's Life's where it's at, yo. Now the thing with Magnificent Seven is it's kind of almost set up to fail. People don't like remakes at the best of times, but a remake of a remake kinda gets to the point where it feels like the creators are clutching at straws. That said, if you're gonna remake any film, Seven Samurai seems to be the one that's easiest to do. Its base plot just works. I mean, listen to the pitch without description of a setting. Some proper nasty twat wanders into a town and says, Yeah, give me and my army all of your food and or land. And then the citizens of the town say, But we need all our food and land, else we'll die like. We best can get seven of the most skilled fighters we can to form a team and hope they'll defend we. That's it. It's great. I'm already invested. You got an army, you got only a handful of people to fight them. Seven versus 700. I mean, look, the fucking tagline writes itself, you know what I mean? It's like a really sweet handicap match, only John Cena isn't around to kick everyone's ass. You already have a story and it doesn't matter where you set it. Change feudal Japan to the Old West and the samurai to gunslingers. Hey look, that works. Change half the cast into some talking insects, why the fuck not, it works. You could do anything with this shit. Remake it in space, you'll probably get a great movie. Okay, maybe not, but the point stands you could get something special, if you tried. This is just one of those stories that almost lends itself to reimaginings. Just like a good fairy tale. So it comes as no surprise to me personally that the new Magnificent Seven is just a real good time at the movies. Because they already had the base firmly in place, all they had to do was not fuck it up. And hey, in my opinion, they didn't. It's one of those movies where just kind of everything works. It's not going to change the world like Seven Samurai did, but it doesn't make any real obvious mistakes along its runtime. And it comes out the other end, not overstaying its welcome and cements itself as something you can enjoyably munch popcorn to. Now a lot of people are going to be a little pissed off with that, because it's a remake of a quote unquote classic. And there seems to be this whole snobbish hatred people have of just fun blockbusters. Which is stupid, because let's not pretend for a moment that modern cinema hasn't been crafted on the backs of fun blockbuster cinema. And now while I wouldn't put this new Magnificent Seven up there in the pantheon of greats like Jurassic Park or Jaws or the first Star Wars movie, I'd definitely stick it on par with something like The Mummy, which everyone has fun with. And interestingly enough, that was also a popcorn flick remake of a quote unquote classic. Hmm. Deja vu. Now I think the thing that makes it work so well as entertainment, despite it not offering anything new or innovative, is what it does have, it does very well. Director Antoine Fuqua, I probably pronounced his name wrong there but I have absolutely no idea how you say it, is an incredibly competent action filmmaker. And one with a particular eye for making manly movies about masculine macho men doing manly things like shooting, or boxing, or shooting. The kind of movie that you and your mates will watch while flexing and then immediately follow up with a trip to the gym and a battle cry of Aah! Let's go find something to shag. Preferably with tits. And he's very good at making these character driven action movies about grizzled toughened dudes. Now it might seem hypocritical for me of all people to celebrate this kind of filmmaking after my comments tearing down the word badass got so much flack in my Batman vs Superman review, but Antoine does masculinity right. It's normally a crucial part of the exploration of his characters or setting, and his characters manage to feel like actual characters with emotions, god forbid. And while they do all tend to be very macho, it's macho in a good way, because they feel like they have other settings besides scowl and punch. It's not boring. He has a real knack at handling more nuanced tough guys. So it's kind of almost a miracle he hasn't done a western before this movie, since there isn't a genre that lends itself to big charismatic tough guys more. And as far as charismatic tough guys go, you'd be hard pressed to find a more stellar lineup of masculine star power. I mean, you've got the box office smashers of Denzel and Chris Pratt in the same sodding movie for Christ's sake. 
And it's one that lit us then with so many big damn hero shots, you end up wanting to ride off into the sunset with them. Gripping those mighty fine biceps of theirs as those leather chaps tightly hug their heroic asses. Hmm. What was I saying? Oh aye, star power. This movie's dripping with it. They ain't a bad performance amongst them. And yeah, they are kind of playing their like token star parts, if that makes sense. Like Chris Pratt is playing the Chris Pratt action hero. Denzel is playing the mysterious, quiet Denzel type. Vincent D'Onofrio is playing, well, he's kind of playing a guy that sort of sounds like Herbert the Pervert from Family Guy, but he's still fucking cool, you know? And that's the thing, it's pure rule of cool filmmaking. Sure, everyone's playing the typical role they kind of get typecast in all the time, but they're so very good at doing it. And maybe that sucks, you know, a lot of people have been knocking the film, saying it's too similar to other stuff, or it doesn't have the elegance of the original or whatever. And sure, it brings nothing new to the table. I can't pretend that it does or even really defend it past the fact that I enjoyed myself. But it's got a great cast. It all builds to really nice action set pieces, and it made me smile. Sure, it could have been better in places. The soundtrack could have been more memorable, the villain a bit more intimidating. And I'd say my main criticism was that the Magnificent Seven team should have had more infighting. There was very little clashing on that regard, especially for a quick slap together group of big egos from culturally diverse backgrounds during a time when everyone in their gran was both a racist and b seemingly up for a dick swinging contest but fuck it what we got wasn't half bad and if you're in the mood for a trip to the movies to catch a western you should probably still see hell or high water actually but if you've seen that you could do a lot worse than magnificent seven it's tons of fun, and it might be the best team-up of a bunch of cowboy legends since the moment these two lads chucked hats on.